Hello and welcome to this lecture on Christian Perspectives. Today we're going to be looking at how we can be incorporating Christian perspectives in the way that we teach science and technology. During this lecture we'll be looking at three key areas. Firstly, we'll address Christian worldviews and how they might permeate the classroom. Secondly, we'll be looking at Christian perspectives in ICT. And then thirdly, we'll be looking at Christian perspectives in science. Firstly, let's consider what is a Christian worldview and how does that affect us as teachers in schools? Well, Walton Chung defines a worldview as the structural foundation that gives coherence to the diversity of our knowledge, a network of beliefs about the fundamental nature of the world. And Rawtree defines a worldview in cultural terms in that it is a closed belief framework that shapes the way we understand or we experience. We can escape this closed world only by finding the cracks where we can climb in and gain a new view of the world that transcends our cultural beliefs. Then Kuhn describes a worldview with the term a paradigm. And a paradigm is a typical pattern or an example or a model. And so a worldview is the typical pattern one uses to frame underlying theories and methodologies of the world. Therefore, a worldview is the structural foundation for the body of knowledge that you use to make sense of the world. And so it's not surprising that a worldview would permeate every area of our life, including education. If it's our religious convictions and our belief systems, then it's going to be at the core of our worldview framework. And so as Christian teachers, we need to be encouraging students to develop a Christian worldview as they learn each day, because we believe that a worldview isn't just a body of knowledge, it's a network of beliefs that form the structural foundations that inform our thoughts and speech and action. And so this Christian worldview, this framework, should shape how we teach and how students make discoveries in our classrooms. There are a number of issues to consider when you think about biblical perspectives in teaching. The first one is deliberate versus incidental. And there's often a lot of discussion between teachers about whether biblical perspectives should be deliberately planned or should be incidental moments of exploration and discussion. Here are some arguments for incidental biblical perspectives. Firstly, that they show a more natural integration of faith in everyday life. And this is because it allows for timely and authentic discussion which isn't forced or trite. And also it can be inspired by a child's comment and idea, so it feels genuine as it's generated by the students. However, there are many arguments for deliberate biblical perspectives. For example, a deliberate biblical perspective doesn't depend on the right moment or the right comment popping up. In fact, it can give direction and purpose to a unit of work. It also models a deliberate and thoughtful integration of faith in everyday life and it gives those teachers who are perhaps less inclined or less inspired or perhaps without much experience to have an opportunity to teach biblical perspectives in their programs because they have a structure to go by. I guess the answer here with this issue is that it's good to use a combination of deliberate and incidental biblical perspectives. However, most teachers tend to rely on the incidental moments and therefore probably need to make a greater effort with deliberate biblical perspectives in their lessons. The second idea is drivers, detours and destinations. And this is just a helpful framework to help you think about how you might implement a biblical perspective into your teaching unit. Firstly are drivers, and these are key themes that are developed at the beginning of a lesson or unit. And it's a thread that will drive throughout the whole unit of work. For example, a unit on ecosystems might begin with the creation story and how God created the world in perfect harmony with incredible intricate ecosystems. And that idea and concept will drive the whole unit of work. Detours are offshoots within a lesson. They are moments of discussion or talking points that may come up in the moment but also may be planned. And they're not the central focus of the lesson, but rather they are a detour along the way. For example, a lesson on tectonic plates. 
You might discuss with your students whether tectonic plates were in fact a mistake in God's creation in that the movement of tectonic plates often causes so many natural disasters. Or you might discuss how tectonic plates are a deliberate part of God's creation in the way they provide movement for the shifting Earth's core. Then students might look at what the role of sin is and how it distorts God's perfect creation through the idea of tectonic plates. Then destinations are the final climax or the final point in a topic or unit or lesson. And this is where the prior learning builds up to this end point where students can pull together everything that they have done in a concluding activity with a strong Christian perspective. For example, students could be learning about light and then they finish with a project that implements the use of solar panels in their schools as a way of being thoughtful, caring and responsible stewards of God's creation. Then a third issue in biblical perspectives is that of holistic practice. And this idea of holistic practice is implementing that Christian perspectives should flow into every area of teaching and school life. Now it is often easy to integrate biblical perspectives into particular KLAs, for example science and HSIE, and so I think we need to praise God for the many opportunities that these subjects do provide to talk to our students from biblical perspectives. However, we need to see this idea of Christian worldview and biblical perspectives as holistic and so we need to make a deliberate effort in every KLA so that students can see biblical perspectives flowing into every area of teaching and school life. Now let's look at some Christian perspectives in ICT. Now generally I would encourage you to be using ICT tools in all different KLAs as a tool for learning rather as a, than a separate subject. But you'll see here the examples that are given are generally examples of using ICT within a science context or within an English lesson. Seymour Papert describes that children learn best when they are in the active roles of designer and constructor. And Harrell supports this idea by saying that children and grown-ups learn best when they are actively engaged in playful exploration in which they design and build their own projects. Kids should be able to program on the computer rather than just letting the, pro the, the computer program them. Technology education should be taught in a constructivist manner where students learn through exploration, expression, play, discovery and creativity. Rather than being teacher-directed, technology education should be child-centred and meaningfully integrated into the curriculum. We believe that students are valued as important and special individuals created by God, and therefore their abilities, skills and talents are valued as gifts from God. Whilst their teachers are authoritative figures in their lives, students are enabled to take responsibility for their learning as valuable children of God. And therefore, in technology education, students should be provided with opportunities to construct their learning and knowledge through inf information computer technologies. These are some broad biblical outcomes that could be used in your programs as the biblical driving detours and destinations. So the driving themes and concepts could revolve around ideas such as gaining an appreciation for the privilege in constructing the knowledge and skills through technology, being a responsible learner in a constructivist manner, and planning uplisting and positive products out of a desire to glorify God and act as good creators. Then a biblical detour might be something like what does it mean to use your gifts for God's glory and talking about working hard on a project in worship to God. And then finally, a biblical destination at the end of a unit would be understanding the creation of God in a full and holistic sense. And then also looking at the role of the creator, developing and creating a final product using ICTs. Now we're going to look at some lesson ideas from a variety of units. So the first one is a stage three unit on animations. So at the beginning of the unit, students had to look at a range of animations and then critique them so that they could learn what it was that made a quality animation. 
and then they had to reflect on the role of an animation creator and how that is different or similar to God as our creator. What animations show a positive use of the creator role? Then the next lesson, students had to develop the storyboard for their animation to plan what would happen in their project. And then the biblical reflection for this lesson was to think about using their gifts for God's glory and seeing this as an opportunity of creation to glorify God. And then finally, students got to the point where they were publishing their animations by submitting them online to YouTube. And they had a discussion about obeying the law in publishing work online, considering copyright issues, and understanding that the images were created by the student and so were copyright free, but the music needed to be taken from a copyright free source, such as free play music. And then discussing why it is important to be above reproach in terms of copyright as Christians. Then at the end of the unit of work, there was a lesson where students did a private reflection. They viewed all of their clay animations in the class and praised one another for their work. And then as a class reflected on the following questions and they had to write a reflection themselves and then share it with the class. So the questions were, what does it feel like to be the creator of an animation? What did you have to think about as the creator? What were you responsible for as the creator? And what parts of the Bible talk about God creating the world? How do they describe God as the creator? And what can we praise God for as the creator of the world? The second unit that I would like to look at is a stage three unit on podcasts. In this lesson, students had to develop a script that they were going to record for their podcasts. And as they were writing their script, there were detours in the lesson as there was biblical reflections on how podcasts and scripts can be positive or negative in the way that they influence others. And how as Christians, what type of influence do we want to project? What type of language was being used in the scripts that students were developing? And was it uplifting and wholesome? Then students began recording their podcasts. And they reflected on how they can show others that they value their work in the way that they listen and respond to the podcast recording. And this stemmed out of the biblical perspective of valuing each student for their gifts as God's image bearers. And then finally, in the editing phase of the learning sequence, students reflect on what it means to use their gifts for God's glory. The editing process is perhaps the most time consuming and most nitty gritty and so students were encouraged to work hard on their project in order to worship God with their work and understand also how to create work that is research free and free from plagiarism. Then these were the sequence of questions posed to the students at the end of the podcast creation process. Did your podcast encourage and uplift others? What type of language did you use in your podcast? Was it wholesome? As Christians, do you think that podcasts always have to include a Christian message or theme? Is it okay for a podcast to be entertaining without any important message? What podcasts are good to listen to and what podcasts should we avoid listening to? What does it feel like to be the creator of a podcast? What did you have to think about as the creator? What are you responsible for as the creator? What parts of the Bible talk about God creating the world and how do they describe God as the creator? And then finally, what can we praise God for as the creator of the world? The next unit of work that we're going to talk through is a stage three unit using Google Earth. In this unit of work, students were studying space in science and so they were using the Mars and the Moon components of Google Earth. Firstly, they had to explore the Mars and look at Moon and find the different spacecraft landings or astronaut landings and investigate the way the surface of the Moon and the Mars was formed, looking at the craters and the ridges and the different surfaces that they could come across. And then at the end of these lessons, they had some reflection questions. So firstly, for when they explored Mars, they reflect on the appearance of Mars and whether it would be suitable for mankind to inhibit Mars. Then students had to consider how God has created Earth. 
so that humankind can survive. Then in the lesson where students explored the moon, they looked at the phases of the moon and what they revealed about God as a creator. And also consider why did God create moons to orbit planets? Then students, after looking at astronaut landings, looked at how it is difficult for astronauts to travel the moon and how this reveals a lot about humanity and God. Students had to reflect whether it's okay for Christians to travel to the moon if they were created to live on Earth. Then in the following lessons, students created digital space tours where they put place marks on different planets and star constellations and other features in space and then recorded important facts and information and then um, did an audio recording to accompany their digital tour. And then at the end, they had to reflect on what they thought was the most creative part of God's universe and if they could be God and create, could create any part of space, what would it be? Then after sharing their space tours, they had to reflect on how each of the space tour was very different and how this difference shows God's diversity in the way that he created the universe. Now, the final unit of work that we're going to look at for integration of biblical perspectives with ICTs is a topic on digital storytelling. In this unit of work, students had to find images and text that they could form together to form a digital story accompanied by music, which conveyed the creation story. And then at the end, they had to write a reflection to accompany their digital story, which was published online. And their reflection had to consider the majesty of God as, create, as displayed in their digital story and how this conveyed the story of creation. They also had to reflect on their role as creator in making a digital story. They had to note their learning process that they had achieved and then this written explanation had to be published alongside their digital story online. Now let's turn to Christian perspectives in science and what types of biblical perspectives we could be incorporating into our science lesson. The first unit of work that we'll look at is a unit on adaptations. That is how plants and animals adapt to their environments in order to survive. As part of this unit, students spent time looking at the defence features of particular animals and how they help them to survive in their environment. And you can see for each of these activities, there was a biblical reflection to accompany. So for example, the aquatic defence features, students had to look at five aquatic animals and describe how their features help them to survive in this water environment. And then their reflection had to answer the question, if God created all animals to live together on earth, why did he need to design some to have defence features? Then for deadly creatures, students had to select uh, some deadly, a deadly animal and then they had to describe the different features of this deadly creature. And then the reflection question was, why do you think God created animals with defence features? Is he an unfair creator? Then another activity was students had to look at a worm as a fairly defenceless feature in the animal kingdom and then define, design some defence features to help protect it from predators. The reflection to accompany this was, why do you think God created the worm to be defenceless? Is he an unfair creator? And then the final design task was to create a new species of aquatic animal that would live in the lava of volcanoes and students had to draw a detailed picture with labels to show the features that would allow this animal to survive in this unique environment. How they would adapt to the heat of the lava and what they would eat and how they would breathe. And the reflection question for this unit was, as the creator of a defensive feature, what did you have to consider so that the animal survived? What does this tell you about God and his creation? Another activity in this unit was a project and the project read like this. This term you have studied various plants and animals that have God-given features that help them survive in different environments. Using the information that you have learnt, you have a job to do. 
Design and make a new animal out of clay that lives in one of the following environments and then write an information report about your animal. So students had to pick one of four fantasy planets and then create an animal that would adapt to that environment and then reflect upon their role as creator and how that shows the importance of God as our creator. This was an example of a reflection written in one of the students' projects. God has created defence features so that the animals can protect themselves from predators. It helps keep the food chain balanced. It helps them to live a longer life, but sometimes animals do die. There's no way around it, but God is in control. And then this is a re reflection from a student in an exam that was given to, um, to ascertain the student's learning at the end of the unit. Animals come in all shapes and sizes. They live all over the world. God has created each and every one of them unique and in his own image. The next unit for science that we'll look at is one of weather. Let's read through this unit rationale. Weather is an important part of the ecosystem God's created, of God's created world. The diversity in the range of weather conditions reflects the creator's creativity. Whilst the complexity of relationships between plants, animals, people and weather reflect God's detail. This is evident in scriptures as all things were created by God, things in heaven and on earth, visible and invisible. This unit focuses on weather and the responsibility that we have to care for the natural resources that we are given. Weather is a major part of the children's ongoing experiences. Australia has a harsh and ever-changing climate and these changes in the climate demonstrate the effects of sin on the world. Weather also demonstrates the intricacies of God's plan to care for us in our need for water and thus life. So this is an example of just one lesson in the unit, um, a lesson on temperature. And the lesson opened with a biblical perspective where students looked at God's power in controlling temperature in the Bible. And they discussed how drought and famine in Genesis often demonstrated God's um, judgment that he was passing upon the rebellious Israelites. Then they developed a real world connection so that they could see this idea being connected to real life experiences. And so they had to compile a list of different words that they might use to describe temperature and then rank them from coldest to hottest to make their own temperature ruler. Then as a class, they conducted an experiment where they replicated the notion or the, the art concept of a thermometer by um, creating a reaction between water and ethanol and then applying heat so that the uh, liquid rose like a thermometer. Here are some pictures from the lesson. So you can see here students applying heat with their hands to cause the liquid to rise like a thermometer. And this was a student reflection at the end of the lesson. Today we made a thermometer. First we poured water into a conical flask. Then we put food dye into the water and put metho in the coloured water. Then we put a stopper in the flask and a pipette through the stopper. Then we got two people to warm up their hands and to put them on the conical flask. From the heat of their hands, the water rose like a thermometer. When they took off their hands, the liquid went back down. God has made the sun and some of the sun's heat is lost in space. If all of sun's heat was shining on earth, we would be dead because it would be too hot. But God has given us enough heat from the sun so that we can live. The next unit that we will look at in terms of biblical perspectives is electricity. The unit rationale reads like this. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth, and the earth was formless and empty. Darkness was over the surface of the deep, and the Spirit of God was hovering over the waters. And God said, Let there be light, and there was light. Genesis 1. The very first thing God created was light, a form of energy. Electricity, too, is a form of energy. All matter consists of atoms. Atoms that have gained or lost electrons are electrically charged. This electricity can be both harnessed and marvelled at. In a 60 watt light globe, about 3 billion billion electrons per second flow past any point in the wires to the bulb. 
Human usage of electricity too can be both exciting and dangerous, useful and harmful. This unit will examine the wonder and complexity of electricity. We tap into this invisible wonderland by providing students with the opportunity to design and to create their own electrical circuits. Students will be encouraged to marvel at God's greatness, that he gave us intelligence to connect the dots to make electricity, but that this gift of electricity comes at a cost. Students will explore the ethics of electricity and that we need to conserve energy as fossil fuels are potentially running out. So in one of the first lessons, students had to conduct and create series and parallel circuits, and they had to compare the way in a series circuit each time a light bulb is added, the brightness dims, but in a parallel circuit, additional light bulbs can be added and the brightness stays the same. Then students had to reflect are series circuits a mistake in God's creation because they are less energy efficient? Then the next lesson was on conductors and insulators and students had to test a whole lot of materials to see if they were a conductor or an insulator. And their reflection for this lesson was how can conductors and insulators be used for good in God's world? Then another lesson was where students had to create different switches and then use those switches to be um, a part of a fan by having a little motor and attaching paper blades to form a fan. And the reflection for this lesson was, why might Christians want to use switches and fans? Think about being good stewards of God's creation and saving energy. And then the unit ended by looking at different types of renewable energy and comparing these as energy sources that can be harnessed. And then the reflection for this lesson was, does God care what type of energy we use? What energy sources should we try to use as Christians? Another unit now, let's look at a unit on space for stage three. This is the unit rationale. Space and space exploration generally fascinate students. In this unit, the children will be challenged to look at the sky and be awestruck as the creator's majesty and omniscience. Students will make observations about the solar system and understand that it is comprised of the suns, planets, moons, asteroids, comets, meteors and constellations of stars. The students will appreciate and be inspired by how vast the solar system is in comparison to us. They will also investigate the concept of God being the designer and making the universe as revealed in the Bible. Other concepts will include viewing Earth in its perfect position, Earth's unique life, sustaining environment, and our dominion over Earth as the image bearers of God. The activities investigate the science features in the solar system, the consequences that these have on our daily lives, and the technological aspects of rockets and space shuttles. The students will develop their research skills as they investigate the planets and other aspects of the solar system. Their response will be to magnify the Lord. All things were created by God, things in heaven and on earth, visible and invisible. These are some examples of lesson reflections where biblical perspectives were incorporated into this unit. So at the beginning of the unit, students had to look at the solar system and research about the different planets in the solar system. And then they reflected by looking at this idea that God has created the solar system in perfect balance. The planets orbit around the sun and are perfectly positioned. This diversity in the universe reflects the diversity of God as a creator. Then they did a number of experiments on gravity by dropping different objects and looking at the gravitational forces on Earth. The reflection for this lesson was that gravity is a unique force created by God and that we should be thanking God for the blessing of gravity and how it allows Earth to operate and function. Then students looked at what it was like to be an astronaut and looked at space exploration by astronauts. And the reflection for this was that God created our Earth perfectly to support human life. Gravity on Earth allows humanity to live easily. And it is amazing that we can explore God's universe through travel to space. We should be in awe of the moon and other planets 
as they orbit in our galaxy, reflecting a perfect and ordered creator. And then finally, students had to create a rocket as their project, and they had to reflect on what it's like to be the creator. Now let's turn to look at some units for stage one. This first unit is growing and changing. This is the unit rationale. God created all things. In his plan for creating the world, he planned the sustainability of the world by creating a life of cycle for all living things. All things repeat a cycle, but they are also part of the cycle of the world. When one element is removed, the cycle is broken. When the cycle is disturbed or destroyed, the animal or plant cycle dies. Continuity is vital for the sustainability of God's world. This term year one and two will be learning about growing up and changing, which also incorporates life cycles. The students will learn that as living things grow, they also change. The change can be physical, mental, environmental, but also in humans, spiritual. The students will investigate what the needs are for insects, amphibians and mammals. The investigation will include growth and change of humans. There will also be some discussion on how God has instructed us to grow spiritually and therefore change and become more like Jesus. So the first lesson in this unit was introducing life cycles. So students watched a video on life cycles and then discussed the idea of growth and change so that they could understand the difference between living and non-living things and why animals, insects, amphibians and plants grow and change. The biblical reflection for this lesson is the way that God created growth and change of living things for a purpose. And why does creation cycle? The next, unit, the next lesson in this unit was on plants and students looked at the life cycle of a plant and then constructed an example of a plant life cycle. They then planted a seed so that they could take photos and watch the growth and life cycle of that growing plant during the term. The biblical reflection for this lesson was to read through Genesis 1 and then talk about God's establishment of creation and its cycle. Then the next lesson was on the fish and learning about the cycle of the goldfish. The biblical reflection for this lesson was question and answer time regarding the life cycle of the goldfish and discussing how God has created them with specific features and characteristics that help them to behave a certain way in order to accomplish the cycle. Then finally, students had a lesson on butterflies and they had to look at metamorphosis and discuss life cycle terms such as pupae and larvae. And the reflection for this lesson was, God sees what is hidden in the changing process of a caterpillar to butterfly. The next stage one unit is titled Sinking, Sailing and Soaring. This is the unit rationale. God has power over every aspect of life. He has control of things which can be seen and unseen, air, wind and water. God created these energies to aid humans in the sustainability of life while on earth. God created all things. In his plan for creating the world, he gave all sorts of resources to allow us to learn and teach others to be more like him. To enable us to accomplish this task, God provided energy. Energy is used to sustain us and to travel the world to spread his word. Energy is found in many forms. The beginning of this unit began with a brainstorming session on the term sinking, sailing and soaring and students had to make a mind map individually to think of objects that sink, soar and swim and then consider the energy that is needed to power the objects. The reflection for this lesson was that lots of things studied in this topic are about things that we can't see but trust are there. God himself is like this. The next lesson in the unit was what floats and students had to experiment with different containers to see which one would sink and which would float. And then at the end of the lesson, students discussed how God has established the world with laws of nature that we can't see, yet these laws hold creation in perfect balance. The next lesson was on salt and fresh water. And they did a think-pair-share activity about salt molecules in plain water, looking at pictures of people floating on the Dead Sea due to the high salt content. 
And then there was a discussion on how if, if people can sit upright in the Dead Sea, does this explain how Jesus walked on water? Did the salt in the water hold him up or was there another reason? Then the next lesson in this unit was on displacement. So reading Mr. Archimedes' bath and then discussing the story in terms of displacement and then conducting experiments themselves to explore displacement. Then the teacher led the students in a discussion on how we know about these laws of displacement because of scientists and their discoveries. However, who is it that created these laws of nature? And why would God want man to be able to discover them? Then the final lesson in this unit was on air pressure and gravity and students had to create a paper helicopter and then test the effects of gravity on this helicopter. And the reflection for this lesson was how does our understanding of these unseen forces that God has created enable us to live comfortably today? Are there ways that we can use these forces badly? And this is a final unit for stage one on the topic sound. This is the unit rationale. Sound waves and our senses are another example of how our creator has established a sustained life pattern that benefits mankind. Hearing sounds enables us to communicate, enjoy, interact and appreciate the world around us and God as its creator. As with anything, we need to be discerning as to the things that we hear, as they can affect who we are and how we behave. This unit will be looking at how sounds are created and vary. And these were the lesson reflections. The first lesson was an introduction to sound. Students had to assess their prior knowledge as on the topic of sound. And the reflection for this lesson was to discuss our God-given abilities to hear sounds. As a sense, we also need to be careful about what we hear as this affects what we believe and who we are. Students had to think of examples in their own lives and then read some examples of God speaking to his people and them hearing his words in Genesis 3 and 1 Kings 18. The next lesson was on sound waves and students looked at pictures and videos that might show sound waves and watched the pattern depending on the volume and speech. Then they used Audacity on the computers and the app GarageBand to record their voices and then look at the different sound waves. The biblical reflection for this lesson was that sound waves and our senses are another example of how our Creator has established a sustainable life pattern that benefits mankind. As with anything, we need to be discerning as to the things that we hear as they can affect us as who we are and how we behave. The next lesson was on how sound is created and students had to fill up a glass of water and then have a smart camera next to the bowl and then students conducted experiments by tapping on the side of the bowl and dropping in water in, the, in an eyedropper to observe what happens. Then they had to compare sound waves to the ripples in the water and the reflection for this lesson was that the discovery of sound waves is simply understanding a new invisible force that God has created in nature to enhance, assist and sustain life. It is predictable and controlled within the hand of God's design. Then a following lesson was on loud and soft sounds and students conducted a number of experiments. The first was holding a rubber hose at the end, with, at one end with a funnel, and then speaking into the other end of a hose as a friend had it to their ear. And the experiment was to make long, loud and soft sounds through the funnel and through the hose. Then students had to make telephones out of yoga containers and then vary the length and the distance of the string to make loud and soft sounds. And then finally, students made musical instruments by using different Tupperware containers and elastic bands to test what would make loud and soft sounds. The reflection here was that loud and soft sounds are simply dependent on the size of vibrations. Echoes are created when vibrations bounce off hard surfaces. And this is just another way that we can see the unbelievable thoroughness of our Creator God. Sound is a pattern or process created by Him through unseen forces and laws created to sustain and enhance life. 
And then the final lecture, sorry, the final lesson was on hearing sound and students explored the ear and about how the ear processes sound waves. And then they had discussions about how hearing changes as they get older. And then they spent time looking at sign language and discussing how and why some people are born not able to hear any sound. And this is the biblical reflection for this lesson. Hearing is a God-given sense. Our bodies are frail and deteriorate. Scientists discover ways to enhance our hearing. God has a purpose in allowing people to be deaf and blesses them in other ways. Deafness is a disability that can be risen above in many ways. So I hope this gives you some ideas and some encouragements for how you might incorporate Christian perspectives in the way that you teach science and technology in your classroom.